Hello and welcome to the Noon Book Messy channel. I'm your host Shunakshi Chakravarti and today we are joined in yet another uh, insightful conversation a podcast with an industry leader here at the Rockman Industries office in Gurgaon. I'm joined by Mr. Kaushik Manna. Sir, thank you very much for taking the time out. Today we will be discussing all things related to the uh, aluminum die casting and machining industry we'll talk about alocast 2024 a really massive platform for industry leaders in this industry and the story and the journey of rockman industries uh, once again thank you for taking the time out uh, the reason i say it's a very insightful conversation is because uh, when we speak to industry leaders they help us understand uh, and deep dive into these niche topics and uh, when i was researching and reading up a little bit about the aluminum die casting industry it was too technical for me but i also knew that i'll be speaking to you so i'll get to learn a lot so thank you mr kaushik manna your first thoughts about this interaction okay uh thank you uh, sonakshi first of all uh, i am really excited to have this interaction with you and since we are going to discuss about uh rockman we are going to discuss about uh, the industry yeah. this is really exciting for me and i am ex- looking forward towards the discussion with you right mr kaushik manna is the ceo of rockman industries like i mentioned earlier so i'm going to start off by asking you uh how has the journey been like what has it been like since you took over this as the ceo of the of the company uh so nakshi it has been almost like 9 years for me in this company uh so when i joined uh, initially i joined this organization as the head of operation in this organization and it was almost like 7 years journey when i took over the role of the ceo in this organization and uh, unfortunately for me it was right after covid oh. so there was some kind of a slowdown in the industry and uh, we had a uh, lot of capacity but there was under utilization of the capacity in almost all the locations uh, manufacturing locations that we have and that was a big challenge for us but we could really sell through well uh, through that challenge and today after 2 years 2 and 1/2 years i can tell uh, we are right now in a very good position we have been able to use our uh, capacity almost to 90% mm-hmm. level and uh, we are absolutely now positioned uh, for our next le- next leap right okay so uh, rockman industries is a uh, is a pioneer when it comes to aluminum die casting and machining just to understand this a little bit more how many industries do you actually cater to from um, you know of course um, sports like i understand to aerospace and defense and several other so help us understand what is it that you cater to and what is it that you exactly do okay uh, to talk about rockman and its business uh, rockman is predominantly a aluminum casting company of course we have got a small business where we also deal with steel uh, we manufacture steel uh, chains for motorcycles and uh, scooters but predominantly we are a ca- aluminum casting company and we are extremely focused towards automotive as of now uh when i talk about automotive in automotive we have got two wheeler segment and four wheeler segment we started as a two wheeler uh, supply to two wheeler uh, automotive uh, sector but gradually we moved to four wheeler also so now we supply to both two wheeler as well as four wheelers and uh, we have got six manufacturing locations from here we manufacture different kind of uh, engine components and alloy wheels and supply to the automotive industry as of now uh, rockman is such a trusted name also with like you mentioned and adding further to that uh, uh, in the production of alloy wheels for two wheelers and four wheelers and it is in great demand so let's talk about that great demand but also let's understand the journey how small did you actually start and where where do you stand today where do you position yourself today uh if i talk about rockman uh, the starting actually happened in 1960 it's a 64 years uh, old company and uh, it started in a very humble way that time there was no spare parts available for uh, bicycles so rockman started uh, manufacturing bicycle chains and spare parts mm-hmm. from there it started and then gradually we migrated into you know cast in the, in the field of castings uh today we have got uh, <coughs> seven 
manufacturing locations, Pan India, starting from Ludhiana. Then we have got a couple of more plants in North India. Then we have got two plants in South India, two plants in the central part of the India. So we have got total seven manufacturing locations. And uh, we started from Ludhiana and uh, with a small unit. Uh, now today, uh, this year, probably will be, you know, closing 5,000 crores uh, revenue. And uh, when you, when you uh, talk about alloy wheel, especially you asked me about alloy wheel, uh, we started alloy wheel business in 2007. Uh, that time it was just part of another business, like another business we had casting business, different kind of, so we thought of doing alloy wheel. But around 2016-17, we took a very conscious call to expand our business more into alloy wheel because uh, that was the time everybody started talking about electric vehicles. And when we talk about electric vehicles, there is possibility of the current casting business that we do become obsolete. So that way alloy wheel is something which is absolutely you know engine agnostic. So whether it is uh, current ICE engine or electric vehicles, alloy wheel is something that you need. So we started expanding more and more into alloy wheels. So today in the country we are the number one alloy wheel manufacturers. Uh, we can produce 17 million alloy wheels every year. Uh, out of that, 15 million is for uh, two-wheeler and two million for passenger cars. So, and we would like, like to see this further growing and uh, we would like to invest more and more into our, you know, alloy wheel business and especially now into the four-wheeler alloy, alloy wheel business. Mm. Um, let's talk about how uh, big your manufacturing is, your operations is, what does it take to sort of, you know, uh, lead the front, lead from the front for such a big company? Uh, what is your employee strength like? Let's talk about the whole operations part of it. Someone, of course, like you, who's sort of had that in the past. Uh, as I already said, we have got seven manufacturing locations mm -hmm. and as on today, uh, almost 9,000 uh, employees uh, which includes both white collar and blue collar. Uh, you know, in manufacturing, we actually give priority on uh, three things. Mm -hmm. So number one is human capital. Yeah. So they are our uh, assets, they are our capital. Uh, number two on the technology and number three on the quality. So these three things are our, has always been our priorities and our most of the time goes into developing human capital, they are uh, training, they are grooming, they are hand-holding and followed by that we always want to be the leader when it comes acquiring technology or developing technology. So we were the first one in the country to start uh, liquid metal directly from the liquid metal. Mm -hmm. uh, when everybody used to buy you know solid ingots, we started the entire journey from entire process from liquid metal so and then everybody started adopting that technology we were the first one to bring robot in casting operation so we started complete robotic automation in our casting operation so we always we are ready to you know pay that extra premium for getting that uh, special technology that will help uh, bringing consistency in the production and quality mm -hmm. so we, our today, uh, we have got a plant in Haridwar, which is the biggest unit mm -hmm. of ours, where almost 2,300 employees are working. And uh, there we have got all the, all the different casting technologies possible we have got in our Haridwar plant. And uh, there almost every day we process or we produce 1,30,000 different kind of components. That is the size of that uh, unit. That's, that's massive. That's, that's massive. Uh, is, it, is it the biggest? In it's, the, it's the biggest. Oh. And I don't know really uh, any other company of that size uh, in the tier one uh, right. industry right. In, in the country. Mm -hmm. 
uh, then we developed, we set, uh, set up a few other factories and finally uh, we set up another factory in Tirupati where we have got in that Tirupati factory only we have got uh, capacity of uh, 8 million alloy wheels under one roof. Mm -hmm. So that is and uh, going forward we will you know set up more and more this kind of uh, facilities in Rockman. Uh, sure, I mean onwards and upwards only and of course uh, you only look at scaling up. Clearly the numbers are a testament to that. I would really like to understand a little bit more about this market now for my own uh, understanding and for you know for the for our viewer listening in and watching this help us understand the rapidly growing two-wheeler and four-wheeler market and where do you position yourself uh, in this industry in India and globally of course. Uh, to understand that you need to also appreciate one thing that in last three four years a uh, lot of people in India have come you know out of the their you know poverty level and rapidly expanding the middle class. Mm -hmm. So when the middle the size of the middle class keep, keeps expand, ex expanding so you get more opportunity or the market for the motorcycle keeps growing because mm -hmm. their first dream is to buy a motorcycle. Okay. So that is why the motorcycle industry also is gr growing rapidly post uh, COVID. And uh, also there is some kind of aspiration buying for passenger cars that is happening. Uh, slightly there is a slowdown in the passenger cars in last six, six months. But otherwise there was a rapid growth there and two-wheeler industry also is growing uh, rapidly in, uh, in the domestic market. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a slight slowdown in the Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, export does not look very promising at this juncture. Uh, we had a close to 100, 120 crores of uh, export uh, to Europe and America. I see a slowdown there. Uh, but still we have got a plan to grow it to 500 crores and accordingly we have started working and uh, we are there to grab the opportunity that uh, the domestic market is uh, you know spreading in front of us uh, especially the two-wheeler business is growing two-wheeler uh, you know industry is growing at the rate of 12 percent today mm -hmm. so and we are growing at the rate of 20 percent year on year so Rockman. Rockman. Right. Okay. So this opportunity that the yeah. industry is posing, we are grabbing that. Right. In addition to that, we are also entering into new territories to further grow uh, year on year. So that is how we are able to maintain a growth of 20% year on year. So clearly Rockman grabs that opportunity, any that it sees uh, come its way. And I think that is also a testament to um, how positive the, the growth has been over the years. Uh, because of this positive thinking, if I can just simply put it. I would also now sort of uh, want to understand from you, uh, if you were to look back with, with a decade of your time here in the company and over to, I'm assuming, in the entire industry that you spent, uh, if you were to look back at the Rockman journey, what is truly the core of the Rockman industry story? What is that journey? What is the core of its story? And uh, what is the road ahead like? Uh as I told earlier, Rockman is a 64 years company uh, and it's a promoter driven com company but uh, it has got a very strong value at the core of its, its business. So our entire business is driven by our core values. Uh, though these core values were there from day one in our business but in a very systematic manner after a lot of uh, deliberation we have we defined our core values around 12 years back and uh, made it public made it uh, public and as well as you know uh, for our available to our employees uh, and whatever you know business we do or whatever business decision we take those are guided by those core values and i would strongly uh, accept and I would uh, like to mention here that these core values are actually driving our business today. Mm. So especially during the difficult time of COVID which we had in 2021 right. uh, when we had a lot of dilemmas right. 
you know, that time these core values definitely, you know, helped us uh, in taking business decision and that is helping us today to grow. Okay. Um, last couple of questions uh, before we sign off. You know, when it comes to uh, key innovations, especially at a time when we're looking at technology playing such a huge role, uh, the whole world is looking at AI, you know, we're really staring at uh, AI and chat GPT and, you know, different uh, softwares like that and innovations like that. Uh, what have been some of the key innovations here at Rockman Industries, which is novel to Rockman? What is it that separates you from your contemporaries and your, con uh, and your, competition, and your competition? And uh, where is it that you actually stand to say that, yes, this is what makes us number one in the game? Uh we are a manufacturing company, so we always wanted uh, AI to play a very important role in our manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, you say AI or Internet of Things mm -hmm. uh, or machine learning, so different aspects of AI. Yeah. Uh, so long back in 2018, when very few you know industries were talking about those things, uh, we started implementing. Uh, you know, data automation in our factories, where the machine used to communicate with the system and used to, you know, transfer the production data, rejection data, down, uh, you know, breakdown data directly to the system. So there was no operator or supervision uh, in intervention. So directly data used to come to the system and the plant manager in his room at, at a real time could see the performance of the machine. Mm -hmm. So we started in 2018. And then uh, we realized that this is not enough. So today we are talking about measuring the output. From there we thought of you know, using Internet of Things where we can drive the output. So something that will predict me, something that will tell me that after three weeks or after you know four weeks this particular equipment may fail there can be a breakdown in this equipment mm. so that way we started monitoring the health of the equipment right. so different kind of parameters of the equi uh, equipment we started monitoring and based on that we could predict the failure mm -hmm. and take preventive measure take advanced uh, you know proactive actions mm -hmm. to you know have a better uh, run, run time for the equipment right. and that has really helped us and and we did the we thought about this almost like three years back right. and we implemented now people have started you know thinking in this direction right. all our uh, energy data in the company are you know collected in one place at a real time so by in analyzing those energy data also we can predict whether the equipment is running properly or there is any problem. So everything can be, you know, uh, done from one laptop. Right. So that kind of, uh, you know, implementation has been done in the organization. And going forward, we would like to, uh, you know, connect all our machine uh, through uh, internet and we will further, you know, uh, invest on uh, you know this internet of things and uh, artificial intelligence right so clearly when it comes to adapting to the ever changing world of technology and innovation you are adapting to those uh, uh, you know changes that are being uh, taken place that we are witnessing not just in India but globally uh, businesses and companies are having to adapt to uh, involving technology as much as they can uh, to better their businesses so that's great to learn about Rockman doing so as well but speaking of implementation in businesses uh, something that is very important and talk of the town as one would say uh, for some, it may just be a buzzword, but frankly, it really is something that people should talk about is sustainability. Yeah. And I would really like to know, uh, and I'm sure our, um, our, our viewers and our industry contemporaries would also like to know that what are some of the sustainability practices that uh, you at your company ensure and oblige to? Uh Again, uh, this you know people have started talking about this sustainability uh, things. Uh, I think since last three four years, yeah. and I remember long back in two thousand twelve mm -hmm. when we were setting up one of our factories, yeah. 
uh, we started talking about sustainability. We started at least doing brainstorming how to reuse the waste heat from our process. And we actually could you know, design and implement a solution which will capture the waste heat from the furnaces, extra heat from the furnaces and will be reused in the process. That was actually our real uh, beginning for a sustainable journey. Uh, and since then, it, it has been a long way for us. So all our furnaces, wherever we have got even a small opportunity of capturing the waste heat, we capture those and use it in our furnaces. So we have got a waste heat recovery system everywhere. Uh, all our furnaces are you know, equipped with waste heat, a waste water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. And all our water that we use in the process are 100% recycled. Right. And gradually, one by one, we are, uh, you know, uh, investing on a zero liquid discharge system mm -hmm. in, in our plant. So now out of seven plants, four plants are zero liquid discharge. Zero liquid discharge means even the last drop of water that we use, if it is a waste water, we uh, evaporate uh, that water and con condense it and reuse the water. So nothing is thrown back to the groundwater. So we take care of the ground uh, groundwater contamination. Uh, we also have invested heavily on uh, renewable energy. So today in the uh, company, we have got four megawatt of renewable energy mm -hmm. and we are further working on in, in, uh, you know, uh, installation of 20 megawatt of renewable energy. Okay. So by 26, uh, FY26, we will have almost 40% of, of our energy requirement coming through renewable energy. Right. So such lot of things we are doing for sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, six months back, we have also you know, kicked off our journey on ESG. Mm. So Important, very important. Yeah. So in that direction also now we have taken a mid-term target and long-term target uh, for the organization and we have started working on ESG as well. Very important. Uh, my last couple of questions now, uh, we'll try and focus on uh, Alucast. Yeah. Uh, very important, that's why we're here. Yeah. Alucast, uh, how do you think a platform like Alucast really brings together industry leaders and experts like yourself under one roof on one single platform? Yeah, that's a very important platform actually and Alucast has been there for years mm. and uh, you know this is a great opportunity for all the industries come to one place you know discuss on uh, different topics uh, something that is going good something is disturbing the organization or something that organization feel is the right direction mm. uh, you know we can discuss about those things uh, you know for example the sustainability your earlier question I think uh, there the industry leaders can come together and talk about sustainability. They can discuss about sustainability. Right. Uh, in addition to that, Alucast you know uh, has provided a platform where people can come and learn. Yeah. So time to time, they arrange different kind of training programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, industries, especially small industries who cannot afford to have their own training system. I mean, they can take advantage of this, you know, Alucast uh, uh, training conducted by Alucast. So that way, Alucast has been, I would say, part and parcel of the uh, business that uh, every organization uh, does in the field of uh, aluminium casting. Um, what would you like to say for the team, for the Alucast team, uh, that really is giving it their all to make sure they put everything together for industry leaders like you, a few words for Alucast, the show. Uh, for Alucast, guys, you are doing a great job and uh, you are actually helping uh, the industry uh, with the right kind of technology, with the right kind of knowledge. And uh, you are actually creating a platform which was absolutely necessary for industry. So you are creating that platform where everybody can come together. So great job, guys. Wish you all the best for the upcoming Alucast. Great job. And my final question to you is, what does the roadmap look like ahead for Rockman Industries? Uh, for Rockman, uh, we have got a great plan, very ambitious plan. Uh, as I said in the beginning, right now uh, we are at around 5,000 crores. Right. 
and we have got a plan to have 10,000 crores revenue by 2030. Wow. And we have got a roadmap for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are already working on a couple of technologies, which are very advanced technologies, which, which are not there in the country today. Right. Uh, one of them is a different way of uh, manufacturing, you know, uh, alloy wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on uh, rolled rims, right. rolled rims, uh, alloy wheels. We are working on uh, alloy wheel through high pressure die casting routes. Mm -hmm. So we are working on a couple of uh, joint ventures also. So all those things you will see happening in next two to three years time on the ground. Right. So all those will come together to make Rockman a 10,000 crores company by FY30. Well, to that, I can only say keep rocking as you Thank have you been much. over the years. And then we will come back again for another interview with you, hopefully, sir. Uh, for that, I'd like to thank you now as we sign off and conclude this uh, very insightful conversation. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.